Hello everyone and welcome to our new series, Brand by Brand. In this series, we're going to be building limited watercolor palettes one brand at a time. It's been a few months since the last episode due to my move, so if you're new to the channel, please check out our first episode which thoroughly explains the purpose and thought behind this series as well as information on my Skillshare class on how to build your own custom watercolor palettes. In short, this series explores making limited palettes from each of my favorite brands of watercolors that were highlighted in my 2019 Top 10 Brands video. Each episode focuses on a single brand at a time, focusing on that brand's unique strengths. Today, we are going to be exploring none other than the wonderful Schmincke Hordam watercolors. Schmincke is widely known for their hand-poured pans, delicate colors, and buttery smooth texture. They offer a wide range of both spectral and earth colors, but their paints tend to be a little bit more subtle than some other brands. In this set, I've paired together some standard mixing primaries with a few rather unique pigments, making an effort to include three colors in particular that are usually really difficult to rewet in other brands, but work beautifully well within the Schmincke range. Schmincke is also generally known for their non-granulating colors, so I've made my earth tone selections based on what most people may be looking for when they look to this brand specifically. However, in being true to myself, I've included some of my personal favorite granulating colors from them over on the accompanying blog post on Patreon that outlines an entire second set of alternate colors if these ones don't quite float your boat. So without further ado, first step is pure yellow. PY154 is one of my favorite yellows in general, and I was glad to see it in Schmincke's offerings. Keeping true with their reputation, Schmincke's version is a rather soft and delicate version of this color on its own, but it does mix really well to make vibrant oranges and greens, as well as adds an undeniable warmth to earth tones. We're going to be skipping a traditional warm yellow slot on this palette in favor of some of those specialty colors a little bit later on. So moving right along to our warm red, I've chosen Vermilion, which is a hue made from PR255. I included PR255 because even though you can find it in other brands that's now a little bit more common, it is still less common than its cousin at PR254. Schmincke's version is truly lovely, mixing rich grays and warm blacks when combined with blues due to its strong underlying orange tones, and it also mixes really beautiful warm earth tones as well. It's hard to choose a cool red from Schmincke as they do have a lot of options. To keep things simple, I recommend a standard PV19 in this slot, and in this case, I'm going to choose Ruby Red. Schmincke offers a few different versions of PV19, including another one that is very similar called Permanent Carmine. However, I find that Ruby Red is more vibrant and a bit cleaner looking. Along with some of the other oddballs to come, this palette staple should pair nicely with your yellow and blues to round out a solid set of primary mixing colors. Next, we have our first of the specialty colors in this set, and it is a stunner. Schmincke's Potter's Pink is undoubtedly my favorite version of PR233 that I've tried so far. Potter's Pink has a reputation for being difficult to rewet, and it's usually pretty weakly pigmented, but I don't find that to be the case here. You will go through the pan a bit quicker than most of your other colors, as it is a very lightly valued color, but this unique pigment has the highest granulation in the set, and along with its soft pink hue, it makes for a very intriguing mixing color. I especially love the combinations with the thalos that you'll see in just a moment. While you'll find Schmincke's notably smooth ultramarine finest on my alternates list, I really wanted to play into transparent and non-granulating colors as much as I could with this set. So in our warm blue spot, I've chosen none other than the stunning Thalo Sapphire, which is Thalo Blue Red Shade made from PB15 colon 6. This rich warm blue, although rather staining, is a good alternative for those of you who just don't care for ultramarine blue. It doesn't neutralize quite in the same way with earth tones, but it still makes lovely grays when mixed with warm reds. My cool blue was an easy decision, as Schmincke does carry one of my more recent obsessions, which is the single pigment Thalo, or what they call Helio, turquoise. 
In our Daniel Smith brand by brand episode, I included their uniquely mixed phthalo turquoise, which leans heavily on the green side. However, you will find that the single pigment PB16 is much more blue and is a no-brainer when it comes to picking a cyan for your mixing sets. It mixes incredibly bright greens, muted purples, and divine teals. I'm sure I don't have to tell you again how much I love our next color, which is Paraline Green made from PBK31. It was a toss-up between this color and a couple other really dark moody tones that I love very much, but at the end of the day, I'm a sucker for the easy blacks, the moody violets, the stormy teals, and the earthy greens that this color can mix. Combined with the pure yellow in this set, it makes a perfect sap green, which is lacking from this set as a standalone color. Next up is a color that I don't use super often in favor of its punchier friend, Thalo Green, but like Potter's Pink, True Viridian made from PG-18 often gets a bad rap in the watercolor world due to how difficult it is to re-wet. However, Schmincke's version once again stands out. It softly granulates, though not as strongly as with some other brands, and it still mixes vivid light greens, bright teals, and even some really interesting mauve tones and aged looking browns. Our final difficult to rewet oddball color in this set is Earth Green made from PBR7 and PG7. Earth Green or Terra Vert in watercolors ranges widely from single pigments to complicated mixtures depending on the brand. This one lies somewhere in between. I love to use it for painting green colored reptiles, while Schmincke recommends it as an excellent undertone for portraits and skin tones alike. This is one color that I go through very quickly because it doesn't have a very high tinting strength, which means I end up using a lot of it, but I do recommend giving it a chance if you do paint the subjects I mentioned. We'll round out our 12 color set with some earth tones, but quite different from the ones you saw in the last episode. This transparent lineup starts with a quinacridone gold, which even though I included in the Daniel Smith video, you probably won't see it much moving forward in this series. However, I do think Schmincke does a good job with this hue as it dries to be a bright earth gold without being overly yellow, it mixes cleanly with other colors, and adds a warm glow to everything it touches. Next, we have our earth red selection. Normally going to something like a burnt sienna or venetian red, I decided to include a much more unique color that I really adore, transparent brown made from PBR 41. Likely a new pigment to many of you, this warm transparent color mixes an array of other gorgeous earth tones. It's extremely similar to PBR25 if you've ever used to that color, but Schmincke is the only place that I've seen this specific pigment in watercolors. We're finishing off the palette with Transparent Umber made from PR101. PR101 is one of the most versatile pigments in watercolor, able to produce an extremely wide range of transparent and opaque colors in a variety of hues. This is one on the darker side, closely resembling a burnt umber, but with a little bit more of a glow to it. It mixes like you'd expect from an umber, but lacks the body that I tend to prefer in my personal earth tones, but many others feel exactly the opposite and may want to get away from that heaviness. So there you have it. This palette was a really interesting one to construct. Schmincke's selection of colors is second only to Daniel Smith, and with a huge variety to choose from, it was incredibly hard to pick just 12 for this uniquely soft set of watercolors. As I mentioned, I chose these colors for those who might be turning to Schmincke for their delicate tones and unique picks, though there are other colors in their line that I actually probably prefer to some of the ones I listed here. As with all the videos in this series, there will be a blog up over on Patreon with an entire second set of alternative colors. For this particular episode, it includes some of my favorite moody colors from Schmincke, as well as some really cool granulating earth tones that you'd be hard pressed to find in many other brands. I do hope that you enjoyed this brand by brand episode and do be sure to let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite Schmincke colors are. But before you go, I do have the results from the Color Spotlight Patreon poll that will decide the lineup for the next season of Color Spotlight that begins on July 18th. I don't think I've shared the results with you ahead of time before, but I thought it might be fun to try out. So without pause, here are the colors that will be featured in the next season of Color Spotlight. Hansa Yellow Deep, Transparent Pyrrole Orange, Paraline Maroon, Potter's Pink, Paraline Violet, 
Phthalo Turquoise, Phthalo Green Yellow Shade, and the Transparent PR101s. I do hope that you are excited for that lineup, and until next time, happy painting!